Today I'm going to review The Precipice, Existential Risk and the Future of Humanity by Toby Ord. So this book talks about the different existential risks that humans face. So all the different things that could wipe us off the planet and how we can combat these risks and approach them in intelligent ways to kind of reduce the risks and ensure that humans keep on chugging along. Uh, it's a pretty basic concept. It's a, the same argument that I've covered in another video about uh, Nick Bostrom's paper, The Vulnerable World Hypothesis. They're very similar, um, but this book really expands on that argument and covers a whole host of topics. This book starts by arguing that this is the first time in history we've really had the technology to cause enough harm to the world that we might put ourselves in jeopardy. And so, the analogy the author makes is that we're standing on the precipice, and that's where the title of the book comes from. So the book starts off by just kind of introducing this topic, and then he kind of just explains the basics of existential risk, and then he kind of goes through a few topics and then ends the book with, you know, a call to action and then some recommendations for what we can do. Um, for me, reading this book, I felt it was kind of tedious, which is an odd way to describe this book because it's such a like heavy topic. You'd think that would be captivating in of itself, but there was kind of this problem with the book in that the various risks that humans face are extremely complex. So if you think about something like ecological collapse, where the environment goes in a downward spiral and we just can't recover from it, uh, covering that topic and explaining it fully would really require like multiple books, you know, thousands of pages and world-class experts. So you would think in a book like this where you're covering a lot of different risks and like this abstract argument, you wouldn't spend too much time in the details of those types of arguments because there's really no possible way you could cover them completely and make a, a full, you know, rational argument. You could only like briefly cover like the basics. So I would expect that in this type of book, the author would stick to like the abstract argument and then just kind of dive into the details to make a few poignant uh, examples or, or points. Instead, the author goes into details and then he spends a lot of time just going through various uh, different types of risks and the attributes of those risks. And I found this to be a little tedious because the thing that's interesting about the argument here is the abstract argument. You know, it's, it's the trying to get across the point that there are existential risks that humans face. And I would expect the book to really focus on that argument and try to drive that home at every turn. Instead, this book uh, kind of just goes from that basic abstract argument, then veers into details and spends the majority of the book in details. And then at the very end, he pops back out and gets back to the abstract argument. And the book really lost me in the middle because it was too detailed for the abstract argument, but it wasn't detailed enough to really be convincing in any way. So it was kind of in this middle ground that didn't really serve a purpose. And that kind of annoyed me a little bit because I read Nick Bostrom's paper, The Vulnerable World Hypothesis. I also made a video on it. And that book kind of talks about just the existential risk from technology. But in that paper, it's it's only like 16 pages, and Nick Bostrom sticks to the abstract argument, and in that condensed version, it was really poignant and uh, impactful. Like, it really resonated with me, and it made me interested in this topic. That's why I picked this book up when I saw it came out. So this book didn't really expand on what I found interesting in Nick Bostrom's article. So I think it it really kind of failed to uh, resonate with me in the same way that Nick Bostrom's work did. This book's not bad. It's just that it's very intellectual and it's not very emotional or impactful. You know, it kind of takes a very philosophical look at the argument, but then it veers into details and just stays there for a while. So I don't really think the author captured the... Uh, core of what's interesting here. 
he kind of focuses on individual trees when it's the forest that's interesting. Uh, what makes this a little bit worse is that, so the book is like 240 pages of, of the core book, but then there's like 180 pages of appendices and notes. So almost half of the content in this book isn't incorporated into like the main narrative. And when I listen to the audio book, that extra 180 pages isn't even talked about. So you're missing a huge amount of the content. So I don't think the author really was able to take all of the bits of this argument and put it into one cohesive narrative. He kind of just, you know, hits the basics of the abstract argument, then he veers off into these details. And that's really all that happens in the book. I would think that if you're interested in this type of book or this concept, this topic, you're probably better off just listening to a few podcasts. Sam Harris interviews the author uh, about this book on his podcast. Uh, and I think that's probably a better way for people to get into this topic. Also, you could go read Nick Bostrom's article, which is free. It's on his website. I'll link it in the description. Um, but I just, I just don't think this book really captured the essence of what's interesting here. So I don't know if I can really recommend it for most people, even though I really find the topic interesting. Um, though if you're a really hardcore reader and you burn through a lot of books, you'll probably burn through this book with no problem and the tedious bits won't really bother you. Um, but if you're kind of the average reader and you only read a, a handful of books a year, I don't think this book hits the quality level necessary to kind of rise above the fray of all the other available books. There's a lot of good stuff out there, and I don't think this book really is good enough to warrant most people reading it. I think everyone's, uh, most people are better off just listening to a few podcasts, because that'll really get the core of his argument. So if you're interested in this, you know, uh, make the decision yourself, but for most people, I think you're better off going with podcasts. So I hope you guys like this review. I've got more reviews coming soon, so like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.